That's how we feel. You can ask Hussein, he'll tell you the same. Everyone from where he's from, they feel like they haven't been treated fair over the years. They don't complain, they don't cry, they just go about it and they grind and they work. But they see other opportunities and other, other things come to, to people from other classes of, of, of the world. Not just in Jamaica. It's, it's, it's just a thing with the inner city and the rural areas of every country, you know what I mean? They, they, kind of, they, kind of, they, they, they kind of forget us at some point. And a lot of us are lucky as I was saying both, are, are a baby sham, you know what I mean? To, to, to really break out of that situation. And sometimes we, 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 we all stem, stem to, to go down the wrong path. And we have to find a way and kind of remember these people. So these youths that are coming won't be straight and go down that path, you know what I mean? When they go to colleges and they get their, their degrees, provide some ways for them to, to be able to, to, to get their resumes accepted. A lot of, of kids go to university, whether you take the University of the West Indies, and they have been sending out resumes for years and nothing, you know what I mean? Nothing at all. But so we... Yeah, yeah, in fact, about that, because I know a few, a few of them come out of school and they might ask them for experience and they must listen, but just I come from school, where might I get experience from? They need chances. They need people to understand that they need to give these kids chances to, to survive and to, to make a living so they don't decide to do something illegal or wrong. So yeah. it's speaking the truth. There's also a lot of talk about hypocrisy. And, you know, if you can't change that in a system, it's worldwide. I'm, I'm just talking on a worldwide level. Like, you can't, you're talking about how does a kid, like, get a start in life. And, you know, I, I just read recently the story of the young sprinter, Antonio Watson, you know, the 200 national, he, you know the student who won the national 200 meter championship and yeah. you know he kind of for those who may not have read that story he did a gun gesture right as he was winning but you know we've seen that in being celebrated in so many ways i i actually just saw a post a few weeks ago or a week ago when this story broke where buju and spraga put out a spraga benz put out a a, a picture of prince william who did a gun salute and you know, people were celebrating his so-called Jamaicanness, And, you know, when you go to a Jamaican dance, people do bullet, bullet, and, you know, gun salutes to celebrate things. And there are a lot of people that criticized this kid and said, you know, they should ban him, take his medal away, and so and so. And then there were others who said, no, that's hypocritical. How come other people, you know, I've even seen a U.S. sprinter do the cutthroat thing when he won one of the championships, you know, and... What, what is, happens in those situations? How do we? How, 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 what are your ideas and thoughts on that? It's all about educating the, the, the youngsters. You know? If you don't want something like that, as you said, it's hypocritical in a way because it depends on what goes on or who does it or whatever. But if you don't want something like that, educate the kids and say, listen to me, this is not allowed because of what it's, other people might look at it as. You understand? In his mind, he's just proving to him that, yo, I just won the race. I'm the man. You understand? Yep. And he went about it in, in that fashion. But they should always just say, listen, let's not do this. Tell the coaches, tell the, the, the organization, listen, we don't want this in trouble. They know a lot of kids will, will always express themselves. You understand? Because early in, the, in, the, in, in one of his races, as if you look at my Instagram, you can see that I actually post it. When you were hearing them, he's just that type of person. Really, and he just went about it wrong. So I don't feel like yeah. they coming at him the way they are. Just, just explain to him now, listen, this is the reason why it was wrong. And you shouldn't do it again. And explain to him so he understands what's going on. Why would you try to take away somebody's medal now? When you do that now, he feels that he's been treated unfair and then decide, you know what, I'm not on the tracks again. Then what? You understand? Right. And who else are going to say, you know what? I don't want to do this because of how people are treated. You can't do that to youth. You and have to explain like, to them and teach them. Yep. And, and that's all. He will go, if he gets successful, he's going to represent the country and the country. The country. And, you know, so, and not just to mention like a young kid being ripped of his achievements and a talent. Talent, like, I mean, you know, it's one thing having talent, it's one thing getting recognized, it's one thing then getting to the point of getting recognized. And as you know, I mean, I don't need to tell you, but 
I mean, there's so many levels to this, you know. And um, did anyone ever criticize you for doing any of the dances? No. Of course. I remember <laughs> when I won in Beijing, wow. it was a big issue because people were saying, oh, I, I'm so... It shouldn't be the chest. And I was like, bro, I was just happy that I won. I wasn't even <laughs> thinking about anybody else. I, I worked hard throughout the year and I was celebrating because, and that's how I felt at the moment. I wasn't trying to disrespect anybody. I wanted to beat my chest to prove that, yo, I am the best because of the work that I put in. And people were saying, oh, I shouldn't have done that. But hey, you're always going to have somebody saying something, no matter what you do. No matter how good you do, no matter how much good you do. You know, <laughs> people saying something bad or negative. If you're too humble, they're going to say bold is too humble. Yeah. You need to throw up a little bit more. Yeah. This kid, hopefully this kid is, is, is strong-willed mentally strong because i can tell you this the amount of tear i see people trying to tear him down yeah. hopefully he's mentally strong because that can affect him his talent everything moving forward so hopefully he's mentally strong and know that you have, you have millions of us out here supporting him you know what i mean and we're not it's not like we're saying we support the gesture we yeah. know that you made a mistake you made a mistake but we're supporting you you're, you're just a kid hopefully you put this behind you keep on moving forward with the track and field and the education and hopefully you can you can move take it to the next level to where Hussein and, 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 and all these top runners from Jamaica took it and, and wave the flag high. And one day no one will re remember this. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. Only remember that he's a, and don't change the personality either. That's his personality. <laughs> Gearing down. Because when I saw the gear down just I was laughing all day. You get what I mean? Everybody enjoyed it man because people Track and feel need the energy. This is why people love me because I brought a different energy. Entertainment. Yeah, the word entertainment to track and feel. So yes. It, 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 it doesn't deter him and, and change his mind from being who he is as a person. You understand? Just enjoy himself and just do the right thing. And, you know, something I've learned from Jamaican culture, you know, it never did any harm to be a little bit boasty, you know, in life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's what you say. How many? T I mean, it's also a way of encouraging other youngsters to get into these different types of sports and stuff. You know, you see it; it's fun, isn't that? Why every we all want to, in our well, you guys are already doing it, but in all our minds, everyone's a movie star, everyone's a singer. Everyone's, it's the entertainment part of it that makes you want to compete. Exactly. So, and that's how you're supposed to feel. You're supposed to feel like that as a human. As a, as a female, you're supposed to feel like a queen. Yeah. As a male, you're supposed to feel like a king. I am the man. I yeah. am the king. You're supposed to feel like that, you know what I mean? Uh, and don't let no one at all take that from you. You're supposed yeah. to feel like that. They have this thing where they try, to, they try to push you in a box and let you just be this little, this little rat in a corner. No, that's back in the days. Bad Africans from Jamaica, West Indies. Lord, the one thing they explain to you, know, when you, if you, if you pull up to the line, believe in your car, win, then you have already lost. Already lost. But that's how life is in general. You have to believe and be confident and proud and just ready to, to do your best at all times. But not all, of, not all of us have been brought up on those amazing Trelawney ground provisions <laughs> <laughs> but no respect i saw that video of your homecoming and your mom was explaining that the real secret is the food you know like yeah man the proper ground food man Some ground great provision food. yeah <laughs> that's an that, that to say when we're that you. An education the world needs also to be honest you know like that's another thing that's a another education but no honestly this song has um done see it's it's basically done a lot for what we are going through right now you know and i on a more fun note i guess i can say that and i'm glad shams sham you brought up girls and you know they should be treated like queens and stuff but you know one thing i always also loved about dance and i think everybody does you know there's fun you know there's whining there's girls it's fun and you know you say you know it's been two years since i got some Yes. I guess in the edit. <laughs> but you know, from, from when I last counted back, it's been a yes. I guess that must feel <laughs> yes to you because that's a long time to be dry like that. I guess. <laughs> well, well, no, 
that's 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 what the lyrics when in dance hall and music and a whole you, you try it. our philosophy is it's, it's never about high egos are individual it's about the music and the work that needs to be done and as our creative juices flow we stick to the philosophy of using the studio to have fun and without fun the music won't be won't be like 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 accepted in that way you know what i mean you have to have fun in the studio if you if you look at what's saying in the studio during the making of the video i was there on the phone when, while they were mixing and you could hear the fun in the studio so when we release records like that with that fun people even though it's it's it's, it's sending a strong message you're still gonna have fun and the lyrics is gonna make you smile at times and it's gonna make you get serious at times and that's what music is about different type of emotions you know what i mean different type of feeling and you can hear it in the whole production you hear the seriousness at times and you hear the fun in the whole production what kind of uh, feedback are you guys getting on the song? Fire. Yeah. Fire. Everyone is loving it. Everyone yeah. is loving it. And not just in Jamaica. All over. All over. We perf I perform it for the first time. Normally, you don't have a song for like a week and a half and, 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 and do it in your set. And it was in my set last weekend in Bridgeport, Connecticut. We had to pull it up. We had to sing it again a cappella without no beat at all and burn down the place. I'm telling you, this is fire. It's fire, and it's only going to get better from here because we're working and we're promoting and we're we are on the grind. You know what I mean? I we kind of want the whole world to hear, the whole world to hear, because the world needs to hear. And Bolt, you have. It's not actually for those who might remember. This is not. You have, even though you've been supporting dancehall culture with all your, you know, on the track and field, but you know, you've actually. You guys have been creating rhythms like the immortal rhythm. I think you know was there like massacre manga cartel was on that. Then you guys had like the clockwork rhythm, and so you know you've been doing this for a while. Of course, as I said, living the dream was a song that you guys put out at the top yeah. of the year. How did you get? Is this going to be something you're invested in on in the long term? Yeah, man, definitely. It's something that I've always wanted to do. You know? It's just that I got the opportunity now in, in the actual pandemic. So as I have time now, I was like, you know what? Let me put some time into this and see how it's going because I've always wanted to do it. So, And it, it's really something that I love and it's going well. I personally feel so definitely. I'll continue doing this and I'll continue making good music. You understand? Making great collabs. The great man himself. Baby Sham, you see? <laughs> well, yes, sir. If you're breaking records, any all you seem like you're breaking records all over the place. Like, again, you know, shout out to both of you. Um, what are the new? Everybody's asking, is there a new rhythm? Is there a new song? I mean, you guys, <laughs> it's all on you. No, we just like, go and work this now, you know. Go and promote, go and promote the clockwork and just go and push the rhythm right now. We're not really rushing to anything because as I said we're getting a lot of good feedback, good energy. So we just want to promote and see how far we can get this rhythm. But there's always things in the pipeline that we're looking to do. So it's we're just, working. Yeah. We're working. Yeah. And you have to remember that it's not just it's not just lockdown. Clockwork have like probably probably ten music videos. Yeah. Where we have never ever seen that in the dance hall space where you have a dance hall juggling. Especially no. Dance hall juggling don't make any more. Clockwork kinda of start but that that old trend, which is the authentic way of, of doing reggae and dance and music, you know what I mean? Juggling for, for who out there in the world that don't understand, when you have one beat, you have like eight, ten songs, six songs on the same beat, and clockwork kind of start that back, and not just that. Took it to the next level now, Bolt and his team went out and did videos for almost every single wow. track on the, on the beat. And not just regular videos. The videos are actually fire. That's a serious commitment. That one put some work. And that's what I've learned, you know. It's just like track and field. You just have to just put in the work. That's put that's, in the work. No matter what you do, if you, you have to make the effort and put in the work and show people that you're serious and you're making good music, making good videos, and just, just push it. You know, we, we started earlier talking about the fact that you guys are two kids that grew up like... You didn't have anything now you guys are living the dream you know there's a lot of artists all around the world in all different genres that you know they get to a level of success but you know then you kind of have the opportunity to branch out of your community and branch out of the way you were brought up but you both have seemed 
very much still rooted and integrated into the culture that you were brought up in. It seems like you love this culture so much, but you don't, not everybody has to do that. Not everybody does do that. A lot of people leave, but it's not always the easy way to stay. Also, what gives you that inspiration and the strength to stay found, you know, in that foundation? Well, for me, you know, I, I grew up as I, I grew up and see the struggles and see what everybody got through. So, for me, I was I was I, I, I was gonna try to give back and to uplift people. And you understand, I have my foundation which I work a lot with. You understand, through these tough times, I work a lot with the school. And my foundation is focused on the, the youths, the young education. You understand? So, I've I've given out a lot of like laptops, computers, uh, printers. I just try to push and to help as much as possible because I do the hustle. You understand? I know it's going to be tough and I want to give everybody the opportunity as much as I possibly can, much as I possibly can give because I know where I'm coming from and I know what it takes. You understand? And sometimes you just need a push or a little bit of help. Yeah. And for me, for me, reggae and dance all music have done so much for me and I mean it basically saved my life. So for me, it's always good if, if it's even to, to entertain the fans, you know what I mean, to entertain the people, just give them a song that, that can let them feel a little bit better about themselves when they rise in the morning, you know what I mean? And I think Lockdown is one of them shots that, even though it's rough, it kind of it let you smile and kind of let you, it kind of voice in your opinion. So these, are, these are questions and, and things that everyone in the Lockdown is saying. They just, they just don't have the platform to say, like, like myself and Hussein, and that's what Lockdown is really doing for them, just speaking up for them. I mean, we mentioned earlier, you know, the world loves dancehall and it's been such a big global impact on global culture, you know, and when you think, you know, how do you think it can get bigger and better? And, you know, a lot of people say it's not as recognized yet, but what do you think about it? Get How do you think it gets bigger and better? Me personally, I think we need more, more business like people, more good managers, top managers, not just artists, you know what I mean? We, are, we always had great artists, but we, 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 lack, we lack great managers. You, you probably find two, three, you know what I mean? But we need more. And we need more unity. We need more, more of us to collaborate together. Like myself and Hussein, you know what I mean? Collaborating together. His name is so huge globally. For him just venturing into this, he could have gone and done, done anything, you know what I mean? He's giving back to the culture that he enjoyed. And he naturally enjoyed dance and reggae. You know what I mean? So I think we all, as, 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 as a community, can, can do more in, in terms of that, the music community. Like, like, not just trying to say, okay, I want to be the man. They have this thing that they always say that only one can work at a time. You know what I mean? And, and if you have one working at a time, when he falls off, then the music starts from, from the bottom again to get back to the top. We need at least 15 more, like you're saying, promoting the record out there, giving it everything. You know what I mean? We need like more 15 bounty killers. 15 being the man, 15 Shaggy, 15 Sean Paul, another 15 Busy, another 15 Tanya Stevenson, Lady Star, Spice. We need so much more in order for this to work, not just one. And we need to tour more. We need to tour more. One of the things that myself and, and Monique was talking about the other day is, is arranging tours, you know what I mean? For instance, say, say for instance, lock, lockdown and, and the whole clockwork rhythm shoots where we wanted to shoot. Five artists from the rhythm alone tour together and promoting the beat and promoting the culture. Not just Sham touring by himself, but picture a Sham, a Charlie Black, a Popcorn, a Spice. Picture that lineup coming into Madison Square Yard. New York no good to the world. That's how we need to preach, you know what I mean? <laughs> yes, I mean, yeah, and we could talk about this forever. I know that we can, but it's really amazing to have you guys just come and give some inspiration because right now, we can't all see each other, but thank God for technology. We're connecting like this now. And I really appreciate both of you guys giving your time out to us and chatting with us and connecting. I can't wait to be back at Tracks on Records. I can't wait to be back at the dance hall. I mean... But the song told you. The song said it. Can't check my friend. Then my phone or video link. Can't go out else. I go eat a rubber drink. 
can't get my house, so our revenue shrink. You want the people that might get pushed to the brink, so we drink. Nothing else than they feel, but not crazy. Leaders don't need to listen to, and not tears me. Don't forget how I vote for you, it amazes me. Wonder if I cure, no, no cure, I'm no lazy. Months and months, they must have to stay home. Can't go a barber for weeks, near no comb. Two years in, people still are die alone, and people still are learn from their mother's cell phone. No, sir, who no need to do better? Who no hear me? Get up, people, they might go get her, but we barely can afford to buy a new sweater, cause I really like treat us any other weirdos and fairly, so I don't give up. No! Clockwork! <laughs> Yo, guys, it was amazing. I can't wait to see all of the new works rolling out, like you said. And thanks for the inspiration. And thanks for getting on here and telling everybody what it is like, because a lot of people are going through it. So one thing that the pandemic has taught us is, you know, reggae music and dancehall music actually has, the messages have been right here under our noses. Reggae and dancehall has always stood for being resistant and resilient and being able to withstand these types of situation. And, you know, it's amazing that there's still more music coming out and entertaining people because we ask the ones that we are here, we still need to be lifted up. We need to be going forward and respect to both of you guys. I appreciate you so much. Respect to Boom Shots, respect to Vibe. Shout out to the whole title family. And I just want to say, can't wait to see, hear the new stuff. Please, if you have any messages for your fans who, who've been clamoring for this IG Live, by the way. So, yeah, please, anything you want to say. No, it's simply, you know, just go out and support, you know. You understand? Clockwork out, just go out and support the rhythm, man. Just remember, anything is possible, you know, don't think limits. All right? <laughs> and just to add on to, to, to what saying, quote, the road to success is not straight. There's a curve called failure, loops called confusion, speed bumps called friends, and red lights called enemies. Cash and signs call family and flat tires call jobs. But if you have a spear call determination and an engine call perseverance, with insurance call fit and a drive to make it, you'll reach a place called success. Lockdown video is out. Go and stream it. Go and watch it. Make sure you go get it, buy it, whatever you have to do. Get it. Can you hear me? Wicked, wicked. Wicked. Shout out to Mo. I'm big up the A team, you know. Yeah, yeah, I'm sitting up. I'm sitting up. I'm you know. They've been tagging. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much. And we're gonna we're just gonna wait till the next stuff comes out and keep it locked and keep it there's no limits. There's no limits. And thank you, big up to Mo also and Z and the whole promotional team that they're working behind the scenes, you know what I mean? NG, the whole staff. You know what I mean? And big up to Rob Kenner, original Mr. Vibe magazine. Yes, Thanks a lot. Yes, you have Rob shown Kenner. up so much love over the years. Rob has, has been repping for dancehall and reggae ever since I got into the space. He was the first one that put me into the Vibe magazine. So big up to Rob. Yes, and, and, Hello. Just, and the success of his book, you know, The Marathon Don't Stop, The Life and Times of Nipsey Hussle. Big up yourself, Rob Kenner. That's big awesome. up, Rob. Big up. Nipsey. Bang it. All right, guys. Wicked. Going out with a lightning bolt here. Goodbye. All uh, right, respect, respect. Respect. <laughs>